Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and for some reason nobody makes that one tool that I would constantly need. So we gotta make it ourselves. Very often when I'm doing electronics projects I just need to know does this thing output the right data? Does it communicate correctly? And very often I'm at my soldering workbench behind me and the PC is nowhere near and I don't even have space for a laptop there. And I just want to know, does it output the right data or not? I could connect a scope, but cryptic up and down traces don't really tell me if the message is correct. So what I'm gonna need is a little mobile display that I can just plug into any project and it just displays what is output there. The communications protocols that I'm mostly interested in is UART, USB and Wi-Fi because a lot of my projects use those and I just need to know did they boot correctly, did they send the right thing at the right time, is communication even working or did I just mess up an IP address or something and a little display that I just can plug in and that just shows what is going on on the bus would be really helpful. The very eagle-eyed among you will of course point out that well just mount a laptop wherever you need it and plug that in. Well these things are huge, I don't have space and I just want it to work. Just display the thing, nothing else to do, plug it in and it just does the thing. And also this could double as a really good notifications display. So if I get a new order or a message or whatever, it just displays it wherever I am and I can take it wherever, I don't even need cables. I know I'm always circling back to this project, but I really, really like it. This is my handheld basic computer and it has a really good display. This is a classic LCD display, backlight of course, and it's really good legible, even from far away or in bad lighting conditions. This is the type of display that I want because all I need it to output is plain text perfectly readable at a glance and that is most effective for the purpose that I'm using my display for, the, the, the universal display, the, the thing that we're building today. The basic batch used a 20 by 4 LCD display and this one is a 40 by 4 one. These have something in common, they all work with the HD44780 protocol which is actually a driver I see that is not really present here but there are ICs that are compatible with that Hitachi standard from back in the day on here. So all the displays that look like this either speak the same language when they are addressed in parallel or they have some additional circuitry on there so you can address them with SBI, square c or whatever. And what I want to make is basically a thing that attaches to this display and transfers everything that gets sent to it via USB, UART or Wi-Fi and displays it on here. It's end of year and we all have project leftovers. So in this project, I'm actually trying to reuse as many parts as possible from older projects. The only part that I'm actually buying new is that display. All the other parts have been used in one way or another in previous projects and maybe you can spot all of them. Let me know in the comments if you know where all these parts came from. I have a metric ton of leftover project parts. So, uh, Let's use the ESP32-S2 room because that art is NR&D which means not recommended for new designs so I should use them up some way or another. We have the project parts, let's hop on over to KiCad and design a little PCB for this thing. Welcome to my computer and KiCad again. <laughs> okay, this is the schematic, it's simple looking because it is. We have this very tried and true power circuitry that enables us with charging and stuff. I have reused these parts in multiple projects over the years. Little voltage regulator, a USB-C port that I've used in multiple projects. This is actually USB 3.1 I think. And this is the Flatflex ribbon connector. We have our microcontroller. It's an ESP32-S2. We have two buttons. One up and one down. Basically this is to select the modes. We have a buzzer on here and I also have a backlight switch in here. This basically the backlight is pulled high but if I pull that low it gets enabled and this is the pinout for this huge 
40 by 4 LCD display, which I have represented here with this graphic. That is so much for the schematic. If we look in the board view, I've made this pretty long because that is actually the shape of the PCB. And I also made sure that these holes line up with the screen and of course the connector lines up. And a really easy way to check this is by putting it on a sheet of paper, or printing that out on a sheet of paper and then putting the original part over it, having a light shine through it and then the shadow will line up. And if the shadow lines up, then this will line up, which I think in practice it will do pretty closely. Yeah, so let's get this manufactured by Isla, assemble it and get to the code. With the assembled project, <laughs> the assembled project is now considerably smaller than a laptop, but it still has the same functionality that I just would use this thing for. Except this is much more convenient because now I can just turn it on. It directly boots. Also gives me an indication if it has booted correctly. And then I can just select my sources and wait for incoming data. Oh, and I also can switch off the backlight if I want to. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. Wait, that thing already works. That means I've already written the code for it. Nice. But you should know how to add more modes to this and make it truly your own. So let's hop on over to the Arduino IDE and check out how to add more modes to this. Instead of going through the whole code, I just show you the interesting bits and how you add more protocols and more stuff to it. Of course, we need web server, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi UDP libraries for that and also the liquid crystal library, of course. We set our credentials for the Wi-Fi router and we have to make sure that there is a port for the UDP incoming packets. This is the port that these packets have to be sent to. So we open only that port. We can open multiples, by the way. And then this sets the pins for our display and we do two display instances. One is the upper portion of the display. The second one is the lower one. So we can address them individually, set up all the pins, of course. And now with all the setup stuff done, then we basically have different uh, sources. So if the variable source is set to a specific value, then we just access that function to read from a specific source. So now that I have all these sources tested, I want to add a new one. So I just copy this one, add it over here, increment that to free and give it a new name. And we say it's USB 11.5.200. So we use the want to have another USB read instance, but it should have a different baud rate by default. So then I just search for that function. If I can find it, there's read UART, here's read USB. I just copy that, put it below and then rename it. Forget the V, read USB 11.5.200 set up different credentials here 
11,500 instead of 9,600. We can also say it has different uh, protocols like serial. I think it's 8E one is a different one. I think it's written that way. But you can have like different serial protocols on there if this is what you require. So I just say I want a different baud rate with that and that is now our next option. And if we compile that, we could see that this has now entered this new option, but we actually can't access it because we also have to make sure that we can actually get there in our menu. So in my loop, I also have to make sure that we can count high enough. We count more, but now it's source over two, it's source over three, and we get to over three. We also have to increment that. And now we have one source more. And if you are really, really good at programming, not like me, like I'm absolutely not good at programming, but if you are good at programming, you would already have on the top just the number of modes that you have and replace all these hard-coded settings with a variable. The power and the joy of variables. Nice! Newer than USB is basically the same thing, just over different ports. But if we go into the Wi-Fi mode, we have a totally different thing. Now it listens for UDP messages. That means once I send a message, this will show up here and it also will reply that it has received the message. Quite often I need to debug Wi-Fi stuff and I have to know if the communication to my network works and if the messages are lost in translation. So if I have a UDP receiver here, I can just simply send raw data messages to this thing. Then I know the data is not corrupted. I also know that it's actually connected to a network and I see what is actually delivered and what gets lost. So if I have signal reception problems, this would help me diagnose that. And also if I haven't written the whole stack yet with like a web server or whatever. A simple UDP message is coded really fast so I know all the networking stuff works before I sink time into the software work on the Wi-Fi side. Of course you have noticed that this is not only a backlit display it also has thank you little feet so I can sit it somewhere or I can even mount it to a wall or to a shelf or whatever. And in between here is the battery, so it's completely standalone and all the stuff except for these two buttons is behind the display. That means it's no bigger than the display plus the USB port. So as compact as it gets, mostly screen. So could you use this also with a different display? Yes, because this is basically a standard pinout, not the way it's pinned out, but all the pins are there that you need for pretty much any HD 44780 compatible screen. So you just have to like make a connection from here to whatever screen you're using. And very interestingly, this acts as two independent 40 by two displays and not like on the basic badge where it was uh, interwoven. So display one was practically row one and three and the other one was two and four, which makes it really hard to code in a flow. This one basically has the upper two rows and the lower two rows separated. So I can also address them individually, which is really handy if you just want to redraw part of the screen, which I do when I receive messages. So all the settings are done on one screen and all the incoming data is drawn on the second screen. A question still remains, what is that little header for down here, this flat flex header? Well, do you remember the keyboard that we did? It also has that header on here. So we can basically connect them together. And now I can debug this project with it easily without any extra cables. Does that remind you of something? Hmm, I wonder why I built all these projects. Sometimes things look weirdly similar to other things. Well, anyway, the point is that I now have a tool that helps me in further electronic projects. Well, for some reason, my laptop doesn't turn on anymore, but thankfully I now have this uh, 
neat little screen that will help me debug it. Or build another one. We'll see. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.